Hello again. Today I'm going to ramble on a little bit about a couple things, and they're all going to do somewhat. To do. They're going to have somewhat something to do with Toastmasters. Toastmasters International, as you probably know, is an organization that helps people with public speaking and leadership roles. But public speaking is what I get into it for because I, I had heard and I had experienced not only heard but I had experienced and I had empirical evidence of actually freezing, physically freezing, not being able to read anything or speak basically because of being absolutely terrified of a situation I was in one time where I was meant to present something in front of a few people. So it is known or it has been said, I don't know what the, I don't have any uh, references to show this but you probably heard it before, you can probably google it, that public speaking comes up at one of the top of the fears that people have in life and they say, sometimes say that it's it's a greater fear than dying itself like there's an old you know line from Seinfeld that when Seinfeld did a stand up one time he said that at a funeral usually most people would rather be in the casket than have given the eulogy so that's one of the reasons I got involved so I'm a, I, I always give thumbs up you know there's things that can complain about it in the organization but by and large for the value, for the so many things, for the lo for the getting to know local community people, it's like a local club that you, you actually grow in yourself, and it's very reasonable cost. Get to meet people and do fun things like contests. Like today, I went to a contest, for example. I had, and I won in a way. I didn't win actually, but I, in a way, I did it because I, I I I did what I went for, there for. I went there to do a presentation in front of a larger crowd, and a larger by a larger crowd, I mean, but because a local contest local division contest it had about 60 people in the room but still that's a pretty good size no podium nothing just you know open stage and a bunch of people and gave a presentation no I didn't come in first place so if first place the first place is kind of nice to get because then you get to go on to the next contest but in a way I won because I said I was going to go and I went right so in that respect I did a few days prior, uh, before this, I think it was Thursday night, a couple nights ago, I did a presentation, kind of an ad hoc presentation, went way over time on it, uh, last minute thing, that I threw together because uh, we were needing a speaker. And I did this presentation on the person. I thought it'd be interesting because it's along the lines of, in some ways, about how we can improve ourselves. And I, I didn't, you, often I will film uh, a speech at Toastmasters if it has to do with something along this line. And I forgot my camera, so I didn't do it. So unfortunately, I'll just, well, I'll just ramble it on here a little bit on the points I touched on. So the, to the topic, the, the name of the speech was called I Love Words. And basically what I talked about was the reason that, one of the reasons I love them is because they, they shape our world in so many ways. They're so fascinating that way. How many people can be captivated by words? And I shared one particular word, which I talked about before, which has probably changed us in a lot of ways lately. That word is person. I talked a little bit about the history of it, the common vernacular of it, and the legal use of it. I spent most of the time on the legal use of it. In the history of it, Person has, well, this is kind of like two parts, right? The per and the sun. Per as in as per. It's kind of like by, right? And son. Um, sona. Sona came from, I think it was the Greek or through, through Greek and Latin. And it meant sound. And per the sound. You might wonder, how does that, how does that have to do with the person? Well, apparently in the ancient theaters, they had masks, right? And you can see the symbol of the theater, sometimes the two masks, the happy and the frowning mask or whatever. And so people, the actors would don these, these masks so they could play several parts. So what you would, you'd hear the sound of their voice, but the mask would mask that sound, so it's per the sound. And therefore, the origin, kind of an origin etymology of the word person is mask, the mask that we wear. So when people have multiple persons and multiple personalities, or you know, we 
show ourselves in different ways, in different places, we're donning like different masks, right? That's kind of the history of it. And the common vernacular, one of the reasons I like it, is because it's a good neutral replacement for the word man. I heard one time that man, well, first of all, well, let me step back. First of all, we know that man is not meant to be spe sex specific when we talk about man in general, right? Like the race, the human race, the homo sapien sapien, whatever, that's, that's man, right? Modern man. Now, at one time, apparently, there was a masculine and a, ver and a feminine prefix to man. There was where man and with man. With man turned into women or woman, but then the, the male version it dropped the, fit, the prefix, which is kind of inconvenient and unfortunate now because now we have to abandon that word to be more inclusive, to say man all the time it kind of leaves women out. So to have a replacement very often we, we use the word person, which is convenient. Now, in fact, at our Toastmasters Club, we have, we have a chart, there are a roster of the different roles in the club, right, for the meeting. And one of them is the chairman of the meeting. At one time that was perfectly acceptable, but lately, to be more inclusive, you either change it to chair or chairperson. So, just as I had done this speech, the week before rather, we had scribbled out with some alcohol, because it was permanent marker, and we wrote chairperson on there. So, that's what I like about it. Now, in the legal, which is what I'll spend a lot more of the time on here, it's interesting because in common vernacular, if we say there's a person over there, that's singular, right? And then as a group, we say there's a bunch of people over there. So, people becomes the plural for person in the common vernacular. And it's perfectly accepted, even though the different words, person relates to mask in its origin, people refers to the word popular, what's, what's popular, the populace, right? It's more along that line, so different words. But in the legal sense, if singular is person, the, the plural is persons, I think that's interesting. Now, I asked the question, has anybody ever wondered why it is that if we're told in schools and whatnot that slavery has been outlawed, how is it that we can that we can be governed against our will? In other words, how is it that we can be told we have to do this and we have to do that? If in fact, on the other hand, we're told that slavery is outlawed, because if in fact we have to, for example, things like having to pay taxes, having to give information to census auditors. I once had census people come to the door. And they told me if I didn't give them information as to who was in the house, that I'd go to jail. So they were threatening me to perform a task without compensation. That is, by very definition, for servitude, slavery, right? How is that? Furthermore, how is it that we can have, we have to get thousands of licenses, all sorts of stuff? It seems like it's overbearing at times, to the point where it may become time when we have to actually get a license to live. Now, perhaps, and then of course, perhaps we thought we were free. Now, I had a bunch of things at that event hung up because I had printed them off the internet in large font. Don't have them here, but I'll just roughly explain to you, explain, explain them to you. It mostly replied to this, this fantastical jurisdiction we call Canada here, which is a, a boundary that somebody has drawn on a map fictional map, and people call it Canada. So it, repl it applies to that. So we are told in schools here, in public schools, government indoctrination camps called schools, that we have a charter of rights, and that's where we get our rights from. Well, see, so we get our rights from some unknown entity writing up things, right? That's what we're told. But we're not told that this charter does not apply to us overtly. So that so we're told that. We're not told that there's such a thing as a Bill of Rights in Canada. In fact, there's a guy on YouTube there, he's quite prominent, Dean Clifford. He actually was pulled over by some cop at one point and, and Dean Clifford questioned him on the Bill of Rights. And the cop told him, that's an American thing. You see, here's a cop who's enforcing 
a bunch of rules and regulations and he doesn't know the rules and regulations. A cop should know the Bill of Rights. He should be able to pull it out of his glove box and reference it. If he's going to have any any sort of um, um, uh, any so any sense of um, credibility with any thinking man or woman, right? Uh, we're not told that there's a Human Rights Act in most subdivisions or sub-franchises of this fantastical thing called Canada, and the particular one that is in this area where most people are deluded into the religion of, it's called Saskatchewan. We're not told that. Now, we're not told also that the Charter of Rights that we're told about, we're not told that it doesn't apply to us necessarily. And I hung these up and I had specific things drawn out. And there's a section in the Charter which says that it doesn't apply to us. And there's a Canadian uh, government website it's called Heritage Canada. And, and, and by the way, if anybody wants any references on these, I can, I can send links to you. And it says there that, that this section is to make clear that the Charter only applies to government. It does not apply to private individuals, private groups, and private institutions, something like that. That was interesting. Now, the Bill of Rights, it says in, the pre, in Section 1, that Canada is founded under God or whatever, and it's a society of free men and free institutions. Free men and free institutions. That was interesting. I pointed that right out there, because lately, here in this fantastical organization called Canada, there's some very deluded men and women in the form of a group called CESIS, who have de apparently declared people who call themselves free men to be terrorists. So free men are terrorists, yet in the Bill of Rights, it says that we're supposed to be free men. See, these are the things that these this is this is how warped people get after a while. And I'm not I'm not saying that this is where we get our rights from. I'm just talking about person right now, okay? Person. Just uh, I'm just trying to lead up to it, and I and I digress at times for sure. In the Human Rights Act, Saskatchewan's an interesting one. The human or no, Human Rights Code rather. Human Rights Code. I read through it, and the only place that human is mentioned is in the title. That's it. Nowhere else that I've that I've seen. I could be wrong, but I I read through it as pretty extensively. However, there's a definition of person in there, and all the in in the um, the definition section of the code refers to everybody as a person, as a person. And I looked up in the Interpretations Act, which I also hung up. Interpretations Act from Saskatchewan. It's like a dictionary for all the government acts and statutes. And it says that in an enactment, the following terms are defined as person includes a corporation and its heir, successors, etc., or the legal representation of the person. Now, includes is an interesting one. What I did is I had a box, and the box is sitting up here, but I don't bring it down. I had a box, and I told the people there, I made the suggestion, because I, I had underneath it a maxim in law, which I had a lawyer uh, verify this no, no more than a week ago, this maxim in law. They still use it. It is a Latin ver the Latin version of it, but I'll just recite it approximately in English. The inclusion of one is the exclusion of all others. So include... In legalese, it's an exclusionary term. I had a box. Imagine a box like this. I had I had put an apple and an orange in the box. I closed the box. I held the box up, and to the group of people, I said, I asked rather. No, I basically made a statement. The contents of this box includes an apple and an orange. Now, based on what I said, what else does it include? It doesn't include anything else, right? Based on what I said, the contents of this box includes an apple and an orange. Based on what I said, what else does it include? Everybody confirm around the room that it includes nothing else. Now, I pointed back to the, to the definition, the legal definition in, the, in those acts and statutes of what person is. Person 
includes a corporation includes a corporation it does not include man it does not include woman it does not include human being so going back to that that other act the human rights act the whole human rights act is only referring to corporations because they define what all these different things like employee employer etc it was always a person who blah 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 a corporation who that's it and at the end people I mean, this is this is hard it's so simple but because we've been so ingrained it's hard for us to get over it right now we are told that slavery is outlawed we are told that in schools but why is it then if we're told that does it seem like we're compelled to be enforced as slaves why is it that we're told if we don't pay our taxes we'll be thrown in jail or punished in some way or potentially shot if we resist why is that well I would say we gotta look no farther than the word person right as I mentioned in the I, I went through the Saskatchewan Human Rights Act and basically what see the outlawing of slavery and the having to do it so overtly because it became so blatant that was a real problem for the ruling classes because the ruling classes depend on us being controlled to some measure, right? So what were they supposed to do? Well, what they did is they redefined person, as I just pointed out, including a corporation, to make it into a corporation, and just hope that nobody, except the bar cult of lawyers, hope that they will never find out. They'll never notice. That nobody will ever notice. They just hope nobody ever notices. The problem is now that we have the internet and so on is that the cat's out of the bag. And lots of people know. Now, so for the purposes of governance, a purpose, a person is a corporation. Now, where does this corporation come from? Oh, darn, I did it again. I don't have my... <laughs> But I'll just I'll just pantomime things here. Um, well, I'll, I'll just tell you. I think I did it before already, but I'll go through it again here. Roughly, what happens is when we're born, right? And no matter where it is and what juridical area that you live in, you, your parents, our parents, are basically threatened to fill some form out, and so in my case, my mother did it, and where I was, the place that I was at, it was called. A statement of birth and I got a certified extract of it and I put it in a laminate cover so it's it's preserved but she wrote it out in her handwriting and it's an indication of a live entity because it says a living child on it so that's that's a representative of somebody living right and she gave me a name it says given name and then surname and weight and sex and so on all the way down and she certified it on the bottom that this is correct this information is correct now she sent that off to some government agency. What came back was a document, a, a wallet-sized document, which is called a birth certificate. And on there, it is basically, as I can see it, it's a plagiarism of what she sent in. Because some of the stuff is the same. It's obviously where they got it. In fact, they said it's a certified extract of a, from birth registration. It doesn't say what birth registration. I'm thinking it's from they just they're 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 setting themselves up for plausible deniability so they won't get in trouble if if somebody was to expose the fraud but uh, some of the things are the same on here but for example whereas on the record of live birth it says given names and name on here it just says name so that's different right and it's all it's written in all capital letters for us my mom did not write it in all capital letters some of the numbers are different and what's interesting is right on the bottom of this it says that it's printed by the Canadian banknote corporation I wouldn't be able to show that to you but if you need the information let me know I'll scan it and blow it up and I can send it to you Canadian banknote corporation so 
I don't know what this is, must maybe, but from what from what people understand, from what we've tried to figure out, what makes sense, is that this is the reason why they can tax us, is because this is like a role that we play, or an office, or a corporate entity. It's kind of like a fiction that somebody's built up. And in fact, apparently, when these used to come, and this is this this one's from 1975, so I have long since lost the number or the, the letter that came with it. But it used to say when they came in the mail, this is not to be used for identification purposes. Obviously, right, it's not identification purposes. It's something that they made. The identification purpose, or the, for the identica identification purpose, the one that my mom made is accurate because my mom bore me in her abdomen. She gave birth to me through the birth canal. And she uh, breastfed me. And she signed that. So she's a first-hand witness. Whoever made this is not any kind of a witness. So this cannot be, this cannot serve as identification. The other one can serve as identification. This, no. But we do anyways. They, they allow us to because they want us to. And they encourage us to. And they don't tell anybody otherwise. And nothing of this is ever told in public schools. You know, it's never told. It doesn't fit the narrative of indoctrination for the purposes of ruling classes. It does not. So this, so we use this and once we use this, behind this is a whole cadre, a whole bunch of rules and regulations for a game. Another game altogether. It's called a citizenship game. And that, this entity can be enslaved. Because this is a created entity. And if we want to play behind it, then we do. And the problem is it's not quite like a chess game. In a chess game, we enter the game and we operate up on the rules that each of those pieces are governed with, right? Just like if I'm operating under this or I'm operating under a driver's license or a fishing license or any kind of another license, there's rules that i got to follow if I'm operating under that license. Just like if I move the pawn, I can only move it so many spots, right? That's the rule for that game. But the difficulty with this game is that person, everybody else that's governing these laws, they don't know it's a game. So you have cops out there and so on with guns and they don't know this. They're deliberately not told this because they are referred to as dogs by the ruling classes. And they're not supposed to know this. Because some of them actually might have a conscience, and if they knew it, they would lay down their guns. Surely they would, right? Now, what's interesting is that, like I said on that human rights code, all of the entities in there who had sort of rights they were all, it would all, we always start off and they define them as a person who blah, blah, blah. And a person in that same jurisdiction called Saskatchewan is a corporation. So what they were talking about, employee would be this, employer would be this, and so on and so on and so on, all the way down the rot, all the way down the line. This is the base person and everything gets added on top. So when I was really young, this would have been called a, a, a juvenile person or whatever it is uh, who had limited rights. Then when that turned 18, then it's got more rights and more obligations and so on and so on and it just it's just sort of like you know you got the pawn and then you got the jack and then you've got the rook and so on they all have a few more rights uh, so that's that's all that is so when you, when you're one player you have access to all of those chess pieces right so the one player can operate but either either a, a minor or a more major piece so it's the same with this I mean somebody who's got a you know a pilot's license who can fly in that system he can do a bunch of other things you know a diplomat he can go around and you know get in car accidents and drunk and so on and not be charged a judge is not considered to be a um, a resident so he can run a, a porno ring and sell kids for money and stuff like that it's very difficult for, for anybody to convict him unless it becomes so incredibly heinous and they take that veneer away from him, they strip him of his judgeship, then he comes back down to here and they can charge him sort of thing. So it's a real weird thing. But all of this is done 
All of this is done by words. All of it. Right? It's done by the twisting of words and the getting a hold of very young children and indoctrinating them into this false religion called statism where they sing the the Our Father every morning called the O Canada or the God Save the Queen or the you know Stars and Stripes or whatever it is they sing that every morning and they they go on parades and they hold up flags and they wave and they and they just and they're taught by people who are so incredibly vetted and, and basically you know are not much more qualified than ask than to ask you know do you want fries with that those are the people who are indoctrinating them and it's really a, a crazy state of affairs but once again it's all coming from the power of words so in conclusion that what I said was I'm fascinated by words because they shape our world and in particular I'm interested in the word person because of its history because of its common vernacular and its convenient replacement for the word man and for the for, for the brilliant yet diabolical way it's been used to in, in an enslavement scheme that I am continuing to unfold. And just a brief little aside as to how this can possibly improve the quality of our lives. Well, it should be obvious by now, I guess, in a way, because it can help us to continue to wake up, to not just accept words when they're said. If there's a little bit of confusion in communication with ourselves or with others, I think it's important for us to sing. Hang on, stop. Hang on a second here. What do I mean by that word? Or what do you mean by that word? As a quick aside, once in a while, people get confused, especially religious people, and they might ask me, do I believe in God or do I believe in this or whatever? And the first thing I got to ask them is, what do you mean by that? You know, because a while ago there was a guy talking to me about Jesus. And I stopped and I asked him, I said, like, do you, are you talking about Jesus literally as a historical figure? Or as some sort of a metaphor like Peter Pan or something? You see what I mean? So, because otherwise, I, I was, I didn't know what he was talking about. If I don't know what the word means, then I don't know what he's talking about. Because the words can be all over the map. You look up almost any word in the dictionary, and it's got several meanings. And some of them are very divergent in common use. And in the legal world, very often they got their own dic dic dictionary with contrary words. You know, we don't usually think of includes as an exclusionary term, right? When, when the word in includes means is used, that means it excludes everything else. Unless they say includes but not limited to. See, then you can watch for those things. So it behooves us to ask and to get clarity on words because they are so powerful, they control the minds of people, right? Words control the minds of us. Or we let them somehow. And when we control our minds, when our minds get in a certain way, then theirs, our actions are going to follow. Hope this is helpful. Dragging on a bit, I'm up to almost half an hour of a ramble. It's great chatting again. We'll talk again soon. Bye bye for now.